Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the article on MTG Goldfish, which gives you the expected value uh, TCG player mids of Masters 25. It looks okay. And the reason it does look okay is you can see the foils. There is on average a $54 foil price. So if you took the foils away, this would be a not a great set in terms of expected value. But when you add the foils in, you get $216. If you can get a box for under 200 and it's fun for you to draft and you're not going to sit on the box, you're just going to open it, have some fun with it, then it is worth buying. It is a lot of hit and miss. And it turns out many of the foil rares and mythics that are not valuable non-foil are quite valuable. And that is the big turning point here. People are ripping Modern Masters 25 based on Tree of Redemption. Yes, you can get a Tree of Redemption, and yes, that sucks if you're buying a box or even a pack. However, there is a lot of value in the rares. There are more, there's always more value in the rares, typically, because you get more of them than the mythics, but in this set especially. So the average value of a mythic is about $17. The average value of a rare is about $3. If you're paying $10 a pack, probably not worth buying. But if you buy a box for under $200, take a gamble. You might end up ahead. The surprising part is the foils. A lot of these things have ridiculous foil multipliers, and I didn't realize until I started looking at them, hey, look at this card. It's because of EDH, right? It's because of EDH that this set even has any type of value. So when you talk about the mythics, uh, the multipliers, the rares, the uncommons, uncommons are a little weak, and the commons are pretty, very weak. So the bulk price is kind of whatever. I like it though. I like this set. Let me say this again for the 20th time. Do not buy any magic booster boxes for investment sake because you will be holding onto them for a long time. The finance does not work. The math just doesn't add up. If you needed to ship a box, shipping a box is expensive. The box might get damaged in transit. You don't control the post office. The person might ship back the box. There, there's a lot of risk that is inherent when you invest in a box that is not inherent in a single card, for instance, because a single card is easier to move. You would also need the box to go up substantially. So if you buy at 200, you would need that box to be 300 before you can make a tiny bit of profit given fees, uh, eBay fees, PayPal fees, TCG player fees, no matter what platform, unless you have your own store, no matter what platform you're going to sell, you are going to have fees and you're going to have shipping and packaging and supplies. Overall, it's a very strong set. Uh, it's strong because of the foils. It, the added value of the foils in this particular set is much, much higher. Uh, Jace, Imperial Recruiter, the non-foils are not impressive, and you do have both a chromos. You have a lot of variants in this box. But the midpoint, so if you bought a case of this, which is four boxes, you would be okay. I think you hit 800, no problem. But if you bought a box, you know the variants could be all the way from 120 to 300, depending on your foils. The commons, Relentless Rat is the big one. It's interesting as a speculation. I'm not gonna lie. It might be, uh, it might be a while. It might be some time since we see the next Relentless Rat reprinting, assuming there is not one. And this is the common. Getting a few hundred of these are not going to hurt. They sell well, and when they sell, they don't. They sell in a super playset, uh, which makes them easier to move. I would say Relentless Rats should be one of the easiest cards to move um, because you, you can somebody's going to buy all of them from you, your entire stock. Net, Nettle Sentinel is also kind of good. Brainstorm is always good. That's always going to be over a dollar eventually. Commons are good. 
Uh, there's just not enough of them over a dollar. Uh, it is hard to it's hard to gauge a set just based on commons, but I like how, when there is a valuable common in a set, it really does increase the whole expected value. So I kind of wish that Shaman was a, what was, what was that Shaman? We'll see him soon enough. I, I thought he should have been a common and that would have been really, really great. Overall, commons are a little lackluster, but you do have a, very valuable future common relentless rats you literally cannot get enough of them um, i there are people who collect hundreds if not potentially thousands of these copies uh, and it, the fact that it's more available now you're going to have more of those collectors so i like that card a lot um, in terms of a long-term hold it may be a speculation as well given how easy it is to move a lot of times when people talk about buying and selling and buyouts uh, it's really difficult getting that main packages in one go or sending it to that many people oh the uh shimin spirit guide is not the shaman i kept thinking gorilla shaman from alliance because that card has been uh, spiking due to popper so we have our street wraith we have our curse catcher and our spirit guide all very healthy cards Always good to see uh, this amount of cards. I would have loved to see Fatal Push. And a lot of you might ask, hmm, why would Fatal Push be reprinted? Th there's no limit. There's no time gap. They just reprint anything they want whenever they want. I remember, uh, what's that dragon that, or the dinosaur that used to be kind of valuable? The Rex, some type of T-Rex. And they printed him in Explorers of <laughs> you know, And it's tanked its price. So there's really no mystery there's i mean they just reprint everything right so i like the set i am a little concerned about uh jace uh there is rumors that he will be not that he has to he's very weak or he's not very doing very well right now Bloodbraid elf is changing modern slightly but uh jace is kind of met and honestly if you wanted to look at a different product for under 200 eternal masters is interesting because that's Bloodbraid, Alpha, Uncommon, and Jace. Now, the other stuff in it, it's kind of the similar. Like, you do here, you have Rashawn Port, which is nice. Uh, and you have, but over there, you have Caracas, right? It, it's pretty much like it's hard. When they print so much of this, it gets kind of confusing to me, like what actually is in what Master Set. Because they come out like so close to each other, that, and there's not much of a difference. Like, when you think of an iconic card or a, mat, a 25th anniversary card, interchangeable pretty much, or a eternal card, interchangeable. The rares are pretty good. You got Rishon Port, you got the Filter Lands, um, and Hell's Caretaker. I don't know why Hell's Caretaker is here, but nonetheless, that was a card from a long time ago. I'm guessing Legends was when it was originally printed. So Rasan Port is the big one. The filter lands, like, uh, I mean, I guess in EDH they're okay, and then some decks they're fine. But they are surprising to, you know, they're not fetch lands and they're not shock lands, so they don't see as much play. But I get it. I get it. Some of these cards are going to tank harder than other cards. Rasan Port is going to tank the hardest of any card in this set given the fact that it's been so long since Mercadian Mask since it's been reprinted and whether or not there's actual demand versus how rare the card is this card is going to tank the most because I think actual demand is low actual rare um, how uncommon it used to be or how hard it was to find it before it was high and now we have somewhere in the midpoint this reminds me a lot of Chronicles What's going on is exactly what was going on in Chronicles. Uh, and I played Magic through Chronicles. And they would have white borders. And then they would have the set symbol. But now we remove the set symbol and put it on the you know, text box. And somehow that everyone's real excited about that. I mean, isn't, like, isn't this Chronicles over again? Like, we're reprinting, you know, Magic's history and... In my opinion, Magic should be a game to be played. So Chronicles 
if everyone knew and everyone should know at this point, hmm, we don't want to make standard, like if you're a store, you can sell in volume and you can make money, that's fine, you're a store. But if you're an MTG speculator or finance error, you are getting hosed big time. And you should not sit on a card very long. So you have Jace and then you have Imperial Recruiter. It's quite, um, it's quite fascinating like what's happening with Jace's price. It turned, he spiked a ton when he was on band. Then people realized he wasn't that good in modern. Now he's on the, on the way down. So when your Chase Mythic is on the way down, that does not bode well for the box. And it turns out Imperial Recruiter, no one actually uh, really needed this card. We only just need one for our ED8s and that's it. Yes, he's in a legacy deck, but he's in a very niche legacy deck. It's not like he's a four of or he's a dual land. He's just in a random legacy deck. Now the big one, Tree Redemption, I don't really care about that. There's always going to be crap. There's Comet Storm from the very first Modern Masters. There's all types of uh, scenarios where you you cannot you cannot have if we didn't have tree of redemption we would have something equally bad we might have tree of perdition it's just the way magic works like they look at the secondary market price they make their best guess on what the prices currently are and then they you know put in these crappy cards to balance out the price for every jace you need a tree of redemption it's just it's just uh, magic so I don't know. I think for a 25th anniversary set, it is a little bit disappointing because they could have put so much more into the set and really celebrated it. But if you grew up with Magic and you remember the 10th, 10 year anniversary, which was equally as big, what did we get for that? Does anyone remember it? We got, we all got a Rayard Dongbringer promo. And that was it. That's the only thing I remember about the 10th anniversary of Magic. Everyone got a Ray Dornbringer promo at FNM. And it turned out the promo wasn't even worth that much. <laughs> you know, like it was like, yeah, nice. Um, am I at all surprised that this set is not like amazing? No, this is the regular set. I mean, this is the set on the. Look, if they made an amazing set, then they would be dipping into the well too much. They need to make these like uh, very okay sets. They can make eight okay sets or two amazing sets because once they have the filter lands in, they're not going to recover. Uh, Rishon Port is going to take a long time to recover. They will never reach their initial high peaks because they were never that great cards. The Rishon Port was never a $100 card. It was never that good. But because there were so few copies of it and you had market, secondary market influences on it, so you have people buying multiple of them, to speculate on it without playing them. That's why you have the prices you have. And I think that um, stores can still make a good living selling volume, but the individual speculators, they're going to get hosed every time. There's there's people holding Rashawn Port, and they got hosed. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.